everybody, I'm Angelo Viola. This week's Outdoor Journal comes to you from the country of South Africa. Peter Bowman, my co-host and I, will be driving north from the city of Johannesburg to Kruger National Park, situated in the northern province, bordering Mozambique and Zimbabwe. This world-renowned reserve is one of the largest of its kind, stretching over 400 kilometers in length and averaging 60 kilometers in width. From the time you enter the park, you feel like you've been thrust into another world. Here, you soon learn just how significant preserves like this truly are. One unforgettable sight after another. More pictures and film of wildlife have been taken here than newlyweds at Niagara Falls. Although the most popular way of exploring Kruger is from the safe confines of a Jeep, we're here to experience the true essence of Africa, and that can only be captured on foot. We're going on safari. And of course, that also means camping. Not exactly a weekend at the KOA. So how many people would go through the park each day? That's around a million. A million, a million people, people per year. Per yeah. year visit this that, park. That's right. So are we going to get a, a chance to get pretty close to these animals in the next couple of days? Well, absolutely. Okay. hope so. How close? How close? Well, let's now, let's, 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 you know, play it safe and just say we hope so. Okay. <laughs> That's what it's all about, yeah. I'm already... Here, when they say you could get eaten alive sitting around the campfire, they don't mean by bugs. Wow. All right. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Now what is that? that? Is okay, it's an African rock python. So the, the light you can see it nicely. Wow. There you go. Now is that full grown? Is that a small? No, that's a small one. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah, it's a very young one. What will they grow to? How big would they? How will they get lengthwise? Four meters. Four meters. Well, when it's fully grown, it can eat. Uh, what will he eat? Up to Carla. Yeah. Really? Wow. Where did you get this? Uh, I just caught this here in the, <laughs> at the, what, the second tree, the second tree for me. Yeah. Right beside our tent. <laughs> right where we got our tent. <laughs> yeah, like right outside, yeah. <laughs> no, they're not dangerous. Although they have a lot of teeth in their mouth and they can bite you, they can give you a pretty painful bite. They can even give you stitches. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, they're very, very, and they bite you as well. Um, so for example, they bite you, and they bite, they don't bite them, uh, and they go again. They bite them, they, and they move their, their jaws. Well, with the head. With the head, yeah. Let me pick him up. Let me hold him. You want to hold him? Yeah, I want to try it. Oh, that's just he's just right now. Okay. You can bite you like this. I can't give you stitches. There you go. Don't forget that. This is so cool. There's how they construct right there, isn't it? Yeah. That's how they hurt you. How cool is that? That is neat. All night long, the unsettling sounds of animal noises are a startling reminder that it's dog eat dog out there. Morning in the African wild is like no other. Maybe it's because you're just happy to have survived the night. In any case, we're soon reminded that although it's daylight, the ever-present dangers of encountering predators is still very much a factor. Our plan is to trek through a five kilometer stretch of fairly open flatland where most of the grazing animals spend their day. If all goes well, it's a loop that should get us back to camp before nightfall. I'm not crazy about the emphasis our guide put on the word should. I know we, we, we out there to enjoy it, so we're not, you know, uh, they're out there to rush the thing. And if you walk into a dangerous animal, for example, lion, I'm gonna ask you guys, please, the last thing you do is run. But right, do not run, okay? That's the last thing you do. Stay behind us and wait for instructions. Oh, don't worry. Right. No problem. No, Stay I know. behind you and that, I know. you and that, no problem. I know it's difficult sometimes, but, um, Please do not run. Okay, single file. And Bo, you're gonna be behind me? Sure. Who's leading? I'm leading. All right, we're with you, buddy. Hey, how come I'm in the back? There's no guns back here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wow, our first safari encounter, and it's the most bizarre creature on the planet, the lovable giraffe. Even though they look like a byproduct of a spare parts project, when you see a giraffe in the wild, you truly understand the genius of their design. For 
What a weird looking deal. That is cool. If you look at this giraffe, you can also distinguish between the sexes by looking at the horns. I looked underneath and <laughs> gave it away right away. Just look at the top of the horns, right? The bull has got a bold spot there. So I should not look at the undercarriage when I'm trying to sex the giraffe. I need to look at the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I still think my way is easier. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Kruger National Park. We're here in South Africa on a photo safari that'll take us about five kilometers deep into lion territory. As we move along, our tracker picks up signs of grazing activity that he believes to be wildebeest. These prehistoric looking creatures are one of the wariest animals on the plains. Who can blame them? They're the main entree for the king. Lion, that is. And they won't charge you, really? No, no, well, they won't charge you. Yeah. They run away, they will rather run away, because you see, yeah. like so, they, associate, they associate us with danger yeah. when you're on foot. Boy, they're a big animal, man. Big animal. See, yeah, they're, each, all, they're all looking at us. Yeah, they're all looking at us. See, each animal has got a comfort zone. It's what we call a comfort zone. Now, if you enter that comfort zone, you know, it doesn't feel safe anymore, you know, then you'll, uh, well, the various things can happen. Well, they definitely know we're here. Yeah, they know, they know, yeah. But they seem relaxed. You can see that they still... They're still mingling, yeah. Moving around each other. Next to the impalas and zebras, wildebeest are the most numerous of the grazers here in Kruger, with an estimated population of about 14,000. Those guys right now could be thinking we're lions. They could be scared. One well, strange thing about the warthogs, <clears throat> as soon as they start running, they put their tails straight up in the air, like straight, straight. Yeah. And that is for the babies. So when when they when they when they've got babies and they have to flee in the tall grass, uh, the babies can just follow this antenna. Love the way they get down their knees there, their yeah. front legs. That's the best. Yeah, that's incredible. And that's, that's when funny. they use their tusks, and they also use their tip of their nose, you know, to to just dig out all the stuff. Yeah. What are the roots and grubs and roots? All that type of stuff. Roots insects. Grubs. Um, they they'll eat insects. They yeah. eat worms. Anything. Um, uh, anything like that. Basically, if you look at warthogs, you can they see why they're called warthogs. They've got literally warts in their face. Those those growths here on the sides. Yeah. No bone structure in there. It's just yeah, warts. Wart. And um, the male has got four, where the female's only got two. Wow. Yeah. Our next stop, a nearby watering hole, a popular hangout for hippos. There's an estimated 2,300 of these seemingly harmless creatures in the park. That is my favorite type of animal in a way. I mean, if you just look at this, the whole scenario here, it is in this cool water, this whole type of a riverine dam type of atmosphere. So they live and in the water they, at all times? They live in the water. What, what you actually have here is a, a typical um, hippo fashion. Uh, what they do is they lie in the water for the whole day, they sometimes get out onto the banks, um, and they do that because of the fact that their skin is so absolutely fragile to the sun. I mean, they will burn to pieces if they actually have to come out. As soon as the sun sets, let's say basically about two hours after sunset itself, they come out on the banks. Okay, so these guys will, will come out? Yeah, they, and they, they, they basically walk around into the bush quite far. They can go a few k's actually per night. Sometimes. I've heard that that is the most dangerous animal out here. Not the lions, not the jaguars. That one for, for humans. Absolutely. The hippo is the animal that kills the most people. I thought it was, uh, it was it was not a carnivore, I thought it, it ate... It's eventually. not a carnivore, it's, it's, it's totally vegetarian, but again, because of the fact that it is territorial. Um, and uh, it mainly happened in the, happens in the places, you know, in the, in the rural areas where people go down two rivers physically to either go and wash their clothes, to either wow. go and, and uh, no uh, fetch water. You walk into, in, a, in a little um, uh, footpath and suddenly you're face to face with an hippo, and a hippo <laughs> are known to just attack. They, they just charge. <laughs> As what, they'll bite the person or something? They bite you, step on you, whatever, just... Wow. Just okay. to kill you. Just to kill you, and then leave you. Alone. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah, no, no, they are, very, they are very dangerous animals. I mean, if you, if you look at that head, when, well, yeah, when they yawn, big. it basically splits in half. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. So it's yeah. one bite from that. Wow, look at that. Oh, look at them jumping out of the water. That. that is bizarre. Now, what's he doing with that head shaking thing that he's got? Going? No, well, that, that, that's all um, uh, basically, you know, showing his dominance. Wow, he's showing um, might. He is yawning, yawning as well. He's, he's just showing teeth. Showing the size of the mouth. <laughs>
Our guides constantly change directions in order to stay upwind of the animals, but going the extra distance has certainly paid off so far. We're getting some incredible shots. These guys are good. So this now, this is a herd of female elephants, right? Females and calves, yeah. And calves. Young bulls. What do you call a group of elephants? Well, this is a breeding herd. A herd, okay. A breeding herd, herd yeah. yeah. Oh, a little baby. Never noticed him. But there you can see a bull that's in must. <clears throat> so he joined, he joined up. You see that this oh, one? Oh yeah, you see his you leaking. Can, you see that, uh, that liquid going in. down. Ah. Aren't they a fascinating creature? Absolute deal. <clears throat> um, in their in their lifespan, they get us um, six sets of teeth. Oh yeah, uh, six sets of teeth because of, because of the rough vegetation that they eat. You know, they, their teeth wear down. And um, well, after this, uh, you know, after the sixth one is there and worn down, uh, they've got you know, then they they can't really eat that rough vegetation anymore. So what they then do is they go to riverbeds, places like that near dams, where you get your more broadleaf type of vegetation, softer vegetation. Softer, yeah. And then eventually they'll die there of either starvation or disease or whatever. And um, so sometimes you will get that you'll find one or two skeletons quite close to each other, and that is where the story comes from of the elephant graveyard. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But they do go through this ritual. It's one spectacular view after another. Yeah. That's it, another one of the big five down, eh? Another yes, one. Sir. Good. Let's get back at it. I can see why no one's allowed to go tracking through Kruger on their own. Although the big five are constantly on your mind out here, that is lions, elephants, rhinos, leopards and buffalo, it's also very apparent that it's a bird watcher's paradise as well. Almost 10% of the world's bird species are found here in Kruger National Park. This young eagle is the focus of just one of the multitude of fascinating scenes that unfolded as we moved along the trail. Oh, there it is, there it is. Uh, it, went back into, it went back yeah. into the hole. He's, he's got, got it now. He's got it. Why is it a mouse? Yeah, a, 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 no, some kind of a snake. A lizard? lizard? Maybe a little lizard? Oh, yeah, a lizard, yeah. Oh, he's behind God. the bush. Oh. I think he already ate it. Yeah. This is just another stark reminder that at Kruger Park, if you're not on the team that's doing the eating, you're the one that's getting eaten. And if you think it's just some of the mammals that have got the market cornered on strange and bizarre, have a look at this guy. Yeah, these are um, called the ground hornbill. Ground, ground hornbill. hornbill. Because, because of the fact that they, they basically are most of the time on the ground. This is amazing. Bird. Um, look at this thing. You know, prowling, um, prowling the territory, uh, their, their, their territory, looking for stuff like uh, they eat rodents, they eat, they eat tortoises and stuff like that. Oh, look at him. Wow. Oh, man. And you can see that this one without the red ear, that's a juvenile. Wow. That red guy is unbelievable. The one egg always hatches a week after the first one. So almost basically 50% of the time, you know, the dominant chick just totally overwhelmed the, 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 the younger one. Doing and, he dies. He's and he dies. And he dies. And he dies. Yeah, because he gets, all, he gets most of the food and all that type of stuff. So um, it's only then one chick basically grows up every year. You know, so, so, so the, the population growth is not really that quick. That's wild. I don't know if you guys heard this morning um, as we got up, there was this um, uh, sound far in the distance and made a toot 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 toot. That was them? That was them, yeah. I heard that lion through the night, I'll tell you that. Did you? Oh, yeah, I heard I a roar. I totally missed those guys. Oh. I didn't hear man, I heard a roar. Every turn you make out here reveals yet another one of Africa's fascinating creatures. Primates like this baboon would never dream of roaming out in open areas like this at nighttime. But during the middle of the day, his chances of survival are pretty fair. Most predators prefer the cover of darkness to make their kill. Most of the time. But as we're about to find out, that's not always the case. Don't go away. Welcome back to Kruger Park, South Africa. 
Things are getting tense as we're approaching the heart of lion territory. I said earlier that most predators prefer to hunt at night. Well, it's not always the case. Here's a young giraffe that learned the hard way. So why do you suppose she's got the catch under the tree and she's under the other tree? Well, I mean, that's um, definitely she did. She's done that, right? That's, she, that's her done, giraffe. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. And that's that's still a it's still a young. You can almost classify that as a baby giraffe still. So she uh, killed that. Probably took a little bite out of there, as you can see. Yeah, you can see a chunk out of it. Absolutely, the and then dragged it from where it was killed, right underneath the tree. So <laughs> it's in the shade, you know, out of the sun, and then also blocked from uh, from vultures and stuff because they won't be able to that's, see it. That's right, vultures would be vultures, able to vultures is uh, the big problem. So yeah. that's a young giraffe. How old would that lion be? Do you think? Is that no, an that's older lion or that, young? No, that's a fully grown female. You will probably almost, I would say, make it nine, ten years old. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, would she, could she consume this giraffe by herself? Would she no, consume uh, it? Uh, no, a, a big male lion will in one sitting eat around about 45 kilograms of meat. Um, okay. Where, where a female, no, she, she won't be able to eat it. might make it 25 kilograms. And I mean, this, a, a baby giraffe is already quite a heavy animal. I would love to know when this happened. Uh, thinking there's no real flies and anything around that carcass yet, so that's... No, that's fresh, isn't it? That's fresh. I would say that they're not longer than an hour and a half back. Because, you know, it almost looks like she's resting from it, you know what I mean? No, I, I just wanted to say, because she's not sleeping, she's just actually having a... She's rest resting. Day. Might be that she's... Um, she had to chase it down yeah. and, you know, drag it from God knows where. And just gaining some energy again. As we move along the trail, lion sightings are starting to increase at a rather alarming rate. I'm told that the rulers of this territory are two large males believed to be brothers. But so far, all we've seen are females. A whole bunch of females, eh? That's unusual. They would even stay in this burn area, wouldn't it? Isn't it? That's one thing about lions, you know. They actually, at the end of the day, they don't care where they are. We are definitely in lion territory. Even though I knew we were going to eventually run into lions, I got to tell you, nothing could have prepared me for this gut-wrenching feeling. Then there they were, the brother kings. I almost feel like bowing. They definitely have an air of royalty about them. Now see, this is basically what lions then do for the rest of the day. They just sleep, hang out. They uh, gain energy, they save, they save their energy into night. When all the other ones try to sleep, they, uh, they are at their best. Prowling around in their territory and do the hunting in, uh, in, in pride formation. But you said those are brothers, you figure? Absolutely. Um, uh, and you can actually make it out by just have, um, looking at the mane. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's um, exactly the same, basically. And that uh, can prove of a common ancestor. Really? What happens is, as soon as they start showing mane, their fathers kick them out of the pride. Right? Uh -huh. And then they'll go on a nomadic existence for about three years. <clears throat> That's where most of your male lions actually get killed. By? By other lions, because okay. they haven't gotten any territory. They go from territory to territory okay. wow. until they're strong enough to challenge a pride male, and then and then there's a pride takeover if they I if they say, beat that one. They they would go after him. Yeah. As a team. As a team, yeah. and in that time, in their time of dominance, they will rely on each other's strength because they are a team. And because they will get challenged again by other lions. Nico and the other guides assure me that for the most part, lions here in the park are quite timid when they pick up human scent and usually shy away from any potential confrontations. But like that poor giraffe a little while ago, there's an exception to every rule. And I think this guy's thinking the same thing. Time to go, boys. Man, oh man, that is one beautiful animal. To say that our adventure safari in Kruger National Park has been outstanding would be far too great an understatement. So, instead, let me just say thank you, South Africa. I will never be the same. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight.
my darling, don't fear my darling, the lion sleeps tonight. Hush my darling, don't fear my darling, the lion sleeps Let's hope he sleeps tonight. <laughs>